Mom, I'm pregnant. Excuse me? The doc said I'm four months gone already. I didn't have a clue, can you believe it? Whoa, 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 uh, just slow down a sec there, Kelly. You can't be serious, is this some kind of April Fool's? You You're pregnant? Who's the baby daddy? My boyfriend, duh. Since when did you have a boyfriend? Uh, this is the first I've heard of it. Wait, no way. It's not that Trent guy you were seeing before, is it? Yep, Trent's the daddy. But I thought you two broke up. He said I was the girl of his dreams and that he'd do anything to make it work with me. How could I refuse an offer like that? Besides, I'm not as young as I used to be. It's about time I started thinking about getting remarried and settling down for good. But, oh, Trent, I don't want to insult your boyfriend here, sweetie, but what happened to all that stuff you told me about him when you two broke up? You know about him being lazy and ambitionless? You told me he didn't even have a steady income. How is he going to support a household hopping around dead-end minimum wage jobs? Did he finally get his act together? Is he working somewhere long-term now? Ugh, God damn it, Mom. Can you at least wait five seconds before launching into attack mode? He said he'll get a more stable job when the baby's born. Do you believe him? What was it you said about him before, that he was just drifting about aimlessly while relying on others to keep him afloat like a good-for-nothing bum? I really don't want to insult the father of your baby here, Kelly, but what am I supposed to think after you told me that? You told me he was constantly begging for money from you. You already made the mistake of marrying one lazy bum. Do you really need another one in your life? Oh, please think this through carefully. So what are you proposing I do? Get an abortion? Kelly, oh, please, I didn't say that. Have you told Beth? Yes, actually, I have. Beth knows. Want to know what she said? That if her mommy's happy, she's happy. At least there are some kind people in this family. You know, she'd love having a baby around to play with. She'll be the best big sister in the whole world. I just can't go along with this. I don't want your life to get even harder than it already is. Besides, I thought Beth was scared of Trent. Doesn't he have a short temper? Oh, the thought of him flipping out and shouting at my granddaughter? Oh. Jeez, Mom, don't be such a drama queen. She's not scared of him. She's just not used to guys, that's all. Trent doesn't shout. His voice is just a little louder than most people's is all. Of course your happiness is important, sweetie, and I want you to be happy more than anyone in the world. Of course I do. But shouldn't Beth come first? She's still only ten years old. Children are very sensitive and vulnerable at that age, and we have to think about the environments we put them in very carefully. Won't you at least rethink this for her sake? Beth wants me to be happy, and that's final. Besides, think about it. If I'm happy, I'll be in a better place to make her happy, right? I don't think it's quite as straightforward as you're making out. So what, you think a miserable mom is going to be there for her kids as much as she needs to be? I know you know that makes no sense. A happy, fun-filled life for me means a happy, fun-filled life for my children. I'm not saying I don't want you to enjoy life, Kelly. But can you seriously tell me you think that's possible with a guy like Trent? And I'm seriously telling you that I am pregnant. I'm not telling you that I'm planning on having a baby. I'm telling you there's one already in my belly, and it's four months old. We have no choice but to get married and raise it together. I'm not opposed to you having the baby. Me and your father will be there to support you as much as you need us to. Whenever you need us to, of course we will. Won't you please just reconsider marrying Trent one last time? 
If you decide that's really what you want after rethinking it, I promise to say no more on the matter. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll think about it if that'll make you happy. But I feel how I feel, and no amount of thinking will change that. Sure, I admit it, it wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. Me and Trent might have been through a few rough patches together. But it's just like the old saying goes. Wait, how did it go again? Uh, what doesn't kill you makes you... Um... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Yep, that's the one. Which is why I think we're going to be stronger than ever this time around. We're going to raise this baby together, and no one is going to stop us. I admire your optimism, sweetie, but I hope you'll think this through carefully. I'll have a word with your dad soon. I have to let him know that you're pregnant. Great, thanks. Be careful moving around, okay? You're looking out for two now. And I hope Beth will be your first priority when you make your decision. Don't make her endure anything she's not comfortable with, or treat her like an afterthought just because you have another one on the way. I want you to remember you can always call me or your dad if you're struggling with anything. And I mean straight away. Jeez, Mom, would you give it a break already? You're like a broken record. I get it. I'm heading back to work. Catch you later. Hey, Kelly, I'm gonna head over to your place tomorrow. Do you need me to bring anything? Do I need you to bring anything? Of course I do. Mary ran out of diapers, not to mention the baby milk shortage going on in this house right now. Oh yeah, not to forget groceries. I need you to bring me some pancakes, frozen pizzas, two loaves of bread, and a box of canned tuna. Can't you ask Trent to get those things? Trent's working away until next month. I'm on my own and I'm struggling. Is it any wonder when he doesn't have a steady job? You'd think he could at least go out of his way to be around to help out with things when his daughter was just born. He went away to work just like he promised he would for crying out loud. There is nothing he could do for you to be satisfied with him, is there? Give him a break. Sheesh. He said he's going to save up so he can buy me something fancy for working so hard giving birth to Mary. Is that so? Well, that reminds me, you two still didn't get married, did you? Nope. Why? What do you mean, why? What happened to all that stuff you were saying about tying the knot and making a serious go of it when you told me you were pregnant? Did you change your mind? Why would you care? You hated the idea of us getting married back then. Did I change my mind right back at you? Sure, I wasn't exactly enthusiastic about it, but... I figure if you're committed to trying your hardest to make it work, then you may as well do it properly and go all the way. There are all sorts of financial benefits to getting married, and if you're going to be running a household together from here on out, it just seems like the sensible thing to do. Listen, Mom, here's the thing. Me and Trent actually talked this through. Think about it. Don't you see how raising the girls as a single mom is more convenient than getting married? Wait, do you mean by getting government handouts meant for single mothers? Bingo! Besides, if I got remarried, the child support payments from my ex-husband would take a huge cut. Or would he have to stop paying completely? In any case, the bottom line is I'd be screwed. We're not getting married, and that's final. I have to go it alone. It's the only way. Anyway, haven't you heard? We live in a feminist world now. I'm a strong, independent woman, and I don't need no man. Well, I do, but the government doesn't need to know that. Kelly, please. Surely you know this is wrong. If you get found out, you won't just lose the money. You could go to jail. Good thing I won't get found out then, huh? Oh my god, Kelly! I never raised you to act like this! That money is for people who are actually struggling to make ends meet! If 
Trent's going to be out working and sending money back for you all to live on, how on earth can you be on single mother benefits? This is plain wrong. Whoa, get a load of Saint Mom over here. I always hated how self-righteous you are. Everyone knows all single moms do this. It's practically an open secret at this point. How about you just get off my back for once? I don't need you whining at me about every little thing. You'll never get away with this, Kelly. It won't work. I suggest you start thinking your life decisions through more carefully. Do you seriously think the government will let you get away with stealing money from hardworking taxpayers? They have ways of checking people's finances, you know. Sheesh, just button it, would ya? Me and Trent don't even live together. Yeah, that's right. When you think about it, I am actually, technically speaking, a single mom. As far as the government's concerned, he still lives with his mom and dad. Plus, he's away on his own for work right now. I'll be telling your dad about this. What? No, you can't! He'll be an even bigger pain in the ass than you are. The only reason I told you is because I thought I could trust you, but it looks like I was dead wrong. Would you really betray your own daughter? I wish I never told you. You're nothing but a miserable, petty old hag. I want you to promise me you won't apply for any government assistance you're not entitled to. It's wrong, and I refuse to look the other way. Me and your father won't be around to help you anymore if you go through with this. Fine. Whatever. You win. I promise. Happy now? Will you and Trent get married when he comes home? I want you to raise your daughters as a proper family. Wow, this is like, so rich, Mom. You couldn't stomach the idea when I first told you. Are you schizophrenic? How am I supposed to know where I stand with you when you change your opinions like you change your underwear? The situation is completely different now. If Trent's finally working a stable job and the two of you are committed to living together and bringing up those little girls as a team, then of course I'm going to see things differently. Jeez, Mom, I just gave birth. Would you mind not nagging at me like a frickin' broken record for once in your goddamn life? I'm sick of your incessant whining. I'm worn out from spending every frickin' waking hour with Mary, and the last thing I need is you picking fault with everything I do. I am so not in the mood for this. If all you're gonna do is preach at me, then I'd rather you didn't bother coming tomorrow. I'm coming. There's no way you're capable of keeping on top of taking care of the girls and doing all the housework at the same time in your current state. Oh, no, you don't, Mom. You don't get to make that decision without my say-so. This conversation is over. And you don't get to decide to cancel on me when I'm already on my way to the supermarket to buy your groceries. Look, Mom, I'll do what you say, okay? I just need you to give me a little time. I'm tired. I'm tired and I don't have the energy for this. If you don't stop with all these ridiculous demands, with all the nagging, with the constant complaints, and with the never, ever stopping to think about my feelings, I'll stop you from seeing Beth and Mary. Right. I see. Fine. I won't say anything for the rest of the week. But starting next month, I need you to start thinking seriously about everything we've been discussing. Ugh, I already said I would, didn't I? If you'll excuse me, I have to put Mary to sleep now. See you first thing tomorrow morning. Grandma? Can I ask you a favor? Huh, Beth, what is it, sweetie? It's not like you to message me at this time. I, I know. Wait a sec. It's a weekday today. Shouldn't you be at school? Why are you messaging me at this time? Is everything okay? Yep, I'm fine. 
I'm taking the day off school today. Why is that, sweetie? Are you sick? Are you okay? No, I'm not sick. I'm fine, really. Then why are you taking the day off school? Did something happen? No, I messaged because I wanted to ask a favor. Grandma, can I have ten dollars? Ten dollars? Why? What's wrong, sweetie? I, I need to buy milk for my little sister. We ran out already. What about your mother? Where is she? Didn't Trent come back from his work placement yet? Sure he did, but they went out somewhere together. Mom hasn't been home in a long, long time. Huh? She hasn't been home? No, they said they were going on their honeymoon. That's why I'm looking after Mary. You mean they left you on your own? When was this? Five days ago. Is that why you're not in school? Because you're looking after your little sister? Yes. I haven't been to school ever since they left. That's why I messaged you. She did leave me some money, but I used it all up already. Mary's milk ran out yesterday, and I didn't know what else to do. Oh my, uh, I see. Right, got it. I'll be there in a heartbeat. Uh, hold tight, sweetie. Wait, Grandma, Mom said me and Mary weren't allowed to see you. I'm sorry, but please, could you just leave the ten dollars on the doorstep and go? I don't want Mom to be mad at me. Beth, listen to me, sweetie. You don't have to suffer through this alone anymore. You need help, and I'm going to help you. And you don't need to worry about your mom getting mad with you. I promise I won't let her do that, okay? But won't they both lose it if they come back and find you here? Don't you worry one bit. Even if they do, I'll protect you no matter what. Me and your grandpa are heading over to the house as we speak. Okay. I'm so sorry to trouble you like this, Grandma. Trouble? Oh, don't be silly, darling. You're not troubling anyone. You and your sister are my precious grandchildren, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. I love you more than the world itself, Beth. Grandma, please, I can't take it anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't. I don't. I don't. Beth. I hate Mom and Trent. I hope they never come back. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I never want to see them again. Beth, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I should have realized something was wrong. I should have been there when you needed me, but, but I wasn't. Me and your grandpa have failed you. No, you didn't. You and Gramps didn't do anything wrong. I know how you always try to help me by getting mad at Mom for all the stuff she does. It's not you, it's her. She's the bad one in all this. Beth, am I right in thinking you don't want to carry on living with your mother? Yes. Say no more. Starting today, you're going to live with me and your grandpa. I'll never let your mom do anything horrible to you ever again. I promise. I'll protect you. We both will, no matter what. Okay. I'll live with you. I promise I'll always be a good girl, and I'll do my homework, and I'll do chores. I'll even help with looking after my little sister. Oh, Beth, you're the best granddaughter I could ever hope to have. Don't ever hesitate to tell us if you want anything once you're here. Me and your grandpa are going to spoil you rotten. You won't have to spend your life suppressing your true feelings for a moment longer. Kelly, where the hell did you and Trent disappear to? Mom? Ugh, god damn it. Didn't I tell you to keep your interfering nose out of mine and Trent's business? Things are finally going well between me and him since he came back from his work placement. The last thing I need is you messaging me with your bullcrap like this all the time. Ugh, I am so sick of it. I don't want to hear the endless nitpicking of a miserable, petty old hag like you. 
Have you still not been home? Huh? What? You forced your 11-year-old daughter to look after her newborn baby sister to go on holiday with Trent. Yeah, that's right, I know. Words can't describe how disappointed I am with you. I know now beyond a shadow of any doubt that you're not fit to be a mother. Huh? Wait a sec. Did Beth rat on me? She didn't rat on anyone. She asked me for help. They're the same thing. Oh, that sniveling brat. That kid is the worst. The worst? No, Kelly. You are the worst. On what planet is it acceptable to force an 11-year-old to look after a newborn baby? Beth's still a child herself. Give me a break, Mom. She'll be moving up to middle school next year, you know. Having her look after her little sister for a little while while me and Trent relax and decompress is hardly a big ask. Jeez, why do you always have to make such a big deal out of everything? You make it sound like I killed someone. Why you gotta have this stick up your ass all the time? Take a chill pill already. She's been on her own for nearly a week, but you only left her $20. She's been voluntarily starving herself just so she can afford to buy milk for Mary. I shudder to think what might have happened to them if she didn't reach out to me. Did you even stop to think about the consequences of this before you two waltzed off on a honeymoon? Well, nothing did happen, did it? They're fine, so quit whining. We were planning on coming back tomorrow anyway. Is that really all you can say? You disgust me beyond words. You're not fit to be a mother. Why would you think I care what you think of me? You can say whatever you like. But I'm not the only one who thinks so. Beth said she never wants to see you again. Wait, what? She said that? No way, you're lying. I am not lying. Beth's always super sweet and kind to me. She wouldn't say anything like that in a million years. She's not super sweet and kind to you. You just think she is because she complies with your absurd, borderline abusive demands because she's scared of what might happen if she doesn't. She was so terrified that she covered for you out of fear of what you might do if you thought she told me about how you'd been treating her. Which is why I thought everything was fine between you this whole time. I thought she was happy. But the truth was she was just enduring it so you wouldn't get mad at her. She hates Trent and she hates you. I'm Beth's mother. You speak like you're the authority on this, but I know her better than anyone. Do you seriously believe that? You know, this would be comical if it wasn't so terrifying. You don't know her at all, you deluded child abuser. Me and her went to Child Protective Services together. She told them about everything you did to her. What? You ratted me out to CPS? What the hell did you tell them? Oh, I don't know about the reality of her daily life under your care, maybe? Forcing her to do all the housework would be bad enough on its own. But the fact you pretty much made her act like a mother to her newborn baby sister makes it all that much worse. You and Trent never lifted a finger. To make matters worse, the only thing you let her eat was convenience store bread. What's wrong with that? She gets free lunches at school. And you think that makes it acceptable to force her to survive on two slices of bread a day? You have the parenting skills of a sack of potatoes. It boggles my mind that you actually think this is an acceptable way to raise children. Me and your father will be looking after them both from now on. We're cutting off the money we've been sending you every month to help raise the girls too. We'll also be taking over as the beneficiaries of the child support payments from your ex-husband. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just hold on a sec. What? You have no right to do any of this. Who do you think you are? Stop it. You can't steal my babies. My kids are important to me. Give them back. If they were that important to you, you wouldn't have disappeared for a week to go on vacation while leaving them to desperately fend for themselves in a constant state of fear and starvation. 
Beth and Mary are nothing but sources of income for you. That's not true. Okay, how about we give you a thousand dollars a month? I wonder if that might sway your decision in letting us take custody of the kids? What? You'd give me that much for them? Every month? That's right. We'll raise them ourselves. All you have to do in return is promise you won't ever try to see them. Well, if you put it that way... I suppose I'll consider it. Wow, you are unbelievable. You're happy to abandon your children the moment you think there's money in it for you. Wait a sec, was the offer you just made me a lie? Of course it was! I just wanted to see how you'd react, and surprise, surprise, it turns out you're just as selfish and greedy as I thought. I know exactly what you think of your children now. You tricked me! Who the hell do you think you are? Ugh, I hate you, Mom. You try to paint me like some kind of villain, but you just freaking lied to me. Your own daughter. Don't you see any problem with that? As soon as we get back, I'm reporting you to the cops for kidnapping. Do as you please. You'd be the one who'd get arrested. Huh? But I have legal custody of them. They're my children. Just because you're my mom doesn't give you the right to steal my kids. Didn't I just tell you we spoke to Child Protective Services? As usual, you only listen to things you think will benefit you in some way. I'm in touch with the local authorities and they're already fully aware of the situation. There are several ways this could end depending on how you choose to respond, but me being arrested isn't one of them. The only one who'll be in trouble when you get home is you. In trouble? What's that supposed to mean? All that'll happen is the girls will live with you and dad at your place. Fine, whatever, have it your way. You're delusional if you think you're getting off the hook that easily. I told them about you lying about being a single mother to fraudulently receive government handouts. I suggest you start preparing yourself for the hell that's about to rain down on you when you get home. It's time you started making up for what you've done. What? Oh my god, what the hell have you done? You're supposed to be my mom. Do you take pleasure in making your own daughter suffer? Not in the slightest. But as your mother, I do have a right to take responsibility. To free my poor grandchildren from the living hell you've been subjecting them to. Me and your father won't be around to help you anymore from now on. No matter how much you struggle, no matter how hard life gets, you won't get anything from us. We are cutting you out of our lives forever. Cutting me out of your lives? Uh, please, just hold on a sec, Mom. You can't just spring this on me out of nowhere. Out of nowhere? If you think this came from out of nowhere, then I think you need to see a shrink. Besides, you planned on keeping us at a distance anyway, didn't you? When Trent came home from his work placement, you got angry about me calling you out on your scheme to defraud the government by pretending to be a single mom, didn't you? You're the one who told Beth she wasn't allowed to see me anymore. Mom, listen. All this stuff about CPS and benefit fraud... Did you really tell them what you're saying you did? No way, you wouldn't. You're just using it as a threat to scare me, aren't you? Are you bluffing? You wouldn't really intentionally try to destroy your own daughter's life, would you? I wasn't trying to destroy your life. All I did was tell the truth. How am I supposed to live now? I won't be able to get by if the payments stop. I need that money. That money was only ever supposed to be for the girls. The fact that you were relying on it to make ends meet is concerning. If you're struggling so much, then get a job and work for once in your life. Or at least have Trent pay the bills. You're the one who said he was ready to take work seriously now. The only reason he agreed to go on the work placement this time around was to pay for our honeymoon. 
He said he wants to rest up a while now because he's exhausted from working so much. That was the first job he'd had in months. You can't expect him to just jump right back in at the deep end when he's not used to it. Looks like it's gonna fall on you to keep a roof over your heads then, huh? I have to warn you though, it won't be easy. You'll have the fraud fine to pay soon, not to mention the potential jail time. Potential jail time? What? Just wait a second. No, you have to go back and tell them it's not true or my life's over. I swear, I'll give up on custody of the girls. You can have them. But I promise I'll never do anything stupid again. But please, I'm begging you to undo this stuff about fines and jail time. It's too little too late, Kelly. You know, I somehow tricked myself into believing that no matter what an idiot you could be, you'd never do anything to hurt your own children. How tragically wrong I was. Beth's been enduring your horrendous treatment for longer than she can even remember. I'll never forgive you for abusing and neglecting my granddaughter. Abuse? Neglect? No way! That's just not true! I let her take baths when she was dirty. I even cooked for her. The portions might have been small sometimes, but I let her eat, and that's the truth. Wow, well done, sweetie. Do you want a medal? If you think letting your daughter take baths and eat food is what being a mother is about, then you're delusional beyond redemption. Do you have any idea how much you made that poor girl suffer? Even if we say, for the sake of argument, that you kept her body in something resembling a healthy state, what about her emotions? What about how she was feeling, her happiness? She was downright miserable living with you. Mom, please, I'm sorry, okay? I apologize for everything. I'm really, really sorry. I can't even tell you how sorry I am. I'll never believe another word that comes out of your mouth. Me, your dad, Beth, Mary, we don't need or want you in our lives anymore. The only thing you care about is yourself and your own happiness, and screw everyone else. Why would we want anything to do with someone as twisted as you? This is the last time you'll ever hear from me. Congrats, sweetie. You got what you always wanted. You won't have to put up with this petty old hag, endless nitpicking for a moment longer. See ya. Before long, Kelly was facing criminal charges for benefit fraud and lost custody of the girls. Me and my husband became their new legal guardians, and now they live with us. Things between her and the work-allergic Trent were looking rough at one point when she got arrested. But once she finally started working in a desperate attempt to bring some money in after realizing the gravity of their situation, they reconciled. Last I heard, he's living completely off my daughter's dime. She messaged me in distress one night saying she wanted to break up with him, but I told her there was nothing we could do for her and that was the end of it. Apparently, Trent has a serious drinking problem and even started getting violent with her lately. I'm so pleased we were able to pull Beth and Mary out of there before either of them got hurt. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried about Kelly. I mean, she is still my daughter, but realistically, there's nothing I can do for her. She's the one who chose to be with a guy like Trent, and now she's the one who'll have to pay the price. I'll never forgive her for what she did to my grandchildren. I vowed never to help her again, no matter what, so she has no choice now but to stand on her own two feet and fix her problems by herself. I count my blessings every day that I was able to rescue my grandchildren from the hellish situation she was subjecting them to. Bringing up two little girls isn't easy at the best of times, let alone for me and my husband as we approach our 60s. But one thing's for sure, we intend to make up for the fact their mom isn't around by showering them with the love and affection they didn't get from her, and then some. Fortunately, some of the neighbors whose kids flew the nest a long time ago offered to help the girls when they heard about our situation, which we gladly obliged. I guess you could kinda say we're raising the girls as a neighborhood now. 
You often hear about how communities are dying these days, but not around these parts. We often joke with the neighbors about how we prefer 20th century parenting techniques. Beth seemed a little shy and nervous around us at first due to the shock of all the change she went through. But she's finally coming out of her shell now, and I dare say it even developing a mischievous streak. There's no doubt living in constant fear of being shouted at by her mom contributed to her timidness. But with a little patience and a lot of determination, we've made it our mission to give her back what was taken from her. Me and my husband also made some changes of our own. Now we eat more fruit and vegetables than a pair of gorillas, and exercise every single day because we're determined to be as fit and healthy as we possibly can to give our amazing girls the childhood they deserve.